All right, welcome back here to a Thursday edition of the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by. Time for them to go. Uh, driven and powered by. <laughs> Kill them. Go Cheryl. Kill all the old people. I mean, off. Really? <laughs> My <laughs> I mean, God. What? This is a business owner. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, go for the streets. Yeah. 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 Like, this is my time. time yeah, I need that seat go. back, man. Don't come to 301. I need, I need a 23 to 38 year old in this seat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, like, so we don't that's what I'm looking seats. for. Yeah, right? right? We don't want to see right. you with your dying yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, get rid of Are you going to keep cheering the whole time? Like, yeah, motherfucker. Who wants? <laughs> Who wants Tiger Stadium to come back? You want it back or not? Yeah. Uh, Watch on the TV. All right. Uh, she was there while it was cool. Caroline Fenton, former LSU student. Now she is the host of Locked On LSU. She's also a co-host of Stillman & Company featuring Caroline that uh, you can catch 2 to 6 Central uh, at a 102.5 The Game. That is up in Nashville. Uh, online, thegamenashville.com. She spent some time at ESPN. Uh, over the summer, she is an LSU grad, as we said, and a very talented individual in the world of media. Uh, joining us now here, she was at College Station last week. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> sorry to hear that. Coltland. Yeah. Uh, Caroline, that alive. <laughs> it is good to see you. Good morning. It's been a while. How are you? I know. It has been a while. Good to see you. It was good to, he- to see your name pop up on my phone yesterday. Yes. Thank you for, uh, for helping us out with that. Uh, so first, tell me, uh, Texas A&M, what, uh, what was the experience like? Um, well, College Station honestly exceeded my expectations. Uh, what everyone told me about about College Station was it is just in the middle of nowhere, a bunch of farmland. <laughs> but it was really nice. Met a lot of really great people. It, experience was great. The game was awful mm-hmm. since <laughs> I watched it with a bunch of, of A&M fans. And when A&M went up early, I thought, y'all have not watched enough LSU football because you're excited. And I've seen this story before all season long. LSU gets down early and then they dig themselves out of it. And I was like, this is just an- yet another slow start for LSU. And that was not necessarily the case. So the the ending of that game sucked. And I think LSU games Tennessee and a so officially hanging up all of my LSU tickets for the future because I think I'm the bad luck charm. I can't <laughs> I can't see another brutal LSU loss. Experience was great, but the game just a devastating way to end the season. All right, tell me uh, your perspective of Brian Kelly here year one. Cool picture yesterday on social media. Kelly has been on the job exactly one year uh, as of mm-hmm. yesterday, and he put out the picture of addressing the team 365 years uh, 365 days ago compared to. Uh, hmm. yesterday and uh, two totally different scenes. What has been your perspective of what Kelly has brought LSU in year one? I mean, I don't know what more you could ask other than, you know, beating Texas A&M and keeping their college football playoff hopes alive. If you would have told me in July that LSU would have won the West, beaten Alabama, beaten Ole Miss, beaten Florida and gone nine and three, I would have been doing cartwheels. Because at that point, I had no idea what to expect. I said, I think the floor could be as low as six and six. I think the ceiling could be as high as eight and five, or eight and four, nine and three. So, you know, sitting at the ceiling of that, absolutely, you you have to be pleased. I think the one thing with that, though, is college football and growth, especially under a new coaching staff, it's not linear. So win games this year doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win the West and win 10 games or 11 games the next year. It just means that, okay, now the bar is set. Now the expectation is nine games because you were able to do that less than a year removed from 39 scholarship players in a bowl game. So what more can you do when Harold Perkins year when they have even more growth underneath them what more can you do when you have one of the top recruiting classes coming in in 2023 how can you develop this team even more than you already have when you were just pretty much picking up the pieces of an island of misfit toys and you were able to capitalize off of that in year one so i would say brian kelly gets an a in year one absolutely the tennessee losses and the xanam loss and the florida state loss those are smudges on his resume in year one but nine and three in year one you have to be pleased with it. Uh, do they have a shot this weekend? Absolutely. They have a shot. It's not a great shot. You know, it's not a 0% chance that LSU wins this game. I don't feel great about it, but I think it lies in, in two different areas. First and foremost, it's the defense, because that's what the key to every LSU game, it seems, this year has been, is the defense. They're going to have to create turnovers. And Georgia has been kind of a turnover-prone team so far this year. 
But the competition that they have played has been fairly weak. I mean, this is absolutely, I think, the second most difficult test on Georgia's season so far, probably just behind Tennessee. Um, but Georgia's been turning the football over. And there have been a lot of passes that Stetson Bennett has thrown that weren't intercepted that absolutely could have been interceptions. He throws those kinds of balls to LSU's defense, and those are probably interceptions maybe going back to the house. So I think that's what I think L- the key for LSU to, to win this game is you have to create turnovers. That's been the key for this LSU defense all season long. I mean, they get the scoop and score against Auburn. They go on a 21 to nothing run against Auburn. You know, um, Mississippi State fumbles the kickoff. LSU recovers it. Mississippi State doesn't score a single point after that. LSU starts against Ole Miss 17-3. They crawl back up 24-20. Um, Joe Fouché intercepts Jackson Dart in the end zone, and then Ole Miss doesn't score a single point after that. So creating turnovers has been the biggest way for LSU to both turn around a slow start and to take control over the game. So that's key number one. And I think key number two is give a healthy Jaden Daniels. And it's not just mm. healthy enough to go out there and play and healthy enough to, to you know suit up. But is he healthy enough to use his legs to his advantage that we've seen him do all season long? Because if Jaden Daniels is kind of a statue in the pocket, LSU's offense is going to be one-dimensional. It's going to be a really long day for this LSU team. So a healthy Jaden Daniels, healthy enough to be able to use his legs as an advantage and to create turnovers, that's the key to success. Uh, Before we get your reaction to a 12-team playoff expansion, what was your thoughts of Hugh Freeze? coming back to the SEC, and what type of impact can he make at Auburn? You know, I I find it very funny, I guess the word is uh, I'll use. Maybe hypocritical is a word that I'll use. Probably better. When Auburn's, (laughs) yeah, yeah, hypocritical sounds about right. (laughs) right. When Auburn's boosters, like, cooked up this whole story about Brian Harson's personal life last year, about him you know, sleeping with his assistant, to get him out the door and to be able to fire him with cause. And then now here we are a year later and Auburn hires another <laughs> you know, notoriously <laughs> NCAA violation, personal life, Somebody you know, that actually did riddled it. <laughs> with controversy coach. I just, I find that very hypocritical but you know it's college football all is fair in love and war um Hugh Freeze is a good coach Hugh Freeze is not a great coach Hugh Freeze has not been able to develop quarterbacks to become these you know these Heisman Trophy winners goes on to the NFL to compete for Super Bowls type quarterbacks Hugh Freeze has a really fun offense but Hugh Freeze hasn't been able to turn that offense into competing for national championships year in and year out I think that Hugh Freeze has a good resume, but the thing that stood out to to Auburn boosters and to to John Cohen, Auburn's AD, is well, he beat Nick Saban twice, so he's number one bugaboo for Auburn and for every single team in the SEC West. Can you beat Nick Saban? So I think it was kind of a consolation prize, honestly. I think Auburn wanted Lane Kiffin. I think Auburn wanted Matt Rule. None of those came to fruition. So sure, here you go, Hugh Freeze. Here's a Six and a half million dollar contract, and hopefully you can win some games for us. So honestly, I think this is best case scenario for LSU and for everyone else in the SEC West. I think Hugh Freeze will probably win eight or nine games at Auburn, but that's exactly what got Gus Malzahn fired at Auburn. So it's it's not thrilling to me. I'm not terrified of it. I just think it's it's such a funny hypocritical story <laughs> from Auburn. That is the uh, that should be the moniker of the Southeastern Conference. Hugh Freeze. Uh, just getting the, the the job back at at Auburn is it just means more. It just means more, man. Um, it just means it more. It just means more. <laughs> Expanding to twelve teams. Does that make sense to you, or do you think they stop there? Or you see more expansion on the horizon. I do think there is more expansion on the horizon, but not because that's best for college football, sure. but because that's what's best for the wallets of yes. the ads, for the uh, the presidents, for for the TV networks. I don't like expansion to 12 teams. I thought eight teams made the most sense. But even then, I thought four teams is enough. Honestly, if you go through the history of the college football playoff almost every single year, don't you think we would have been fine with just two? Like if we end up with just Georgia and Michigan this year, I'll be satisfied. And 12 teams, I think you introduce... Yes, you have more players at the table, and yes, more teams get opportunities to compete for a championship. And in theory, that should be that's a good 
important that more teams get to capitalize off of dollars, the TV dollars and the money that's coming in from the college football playoff. But I think you're introducing so many more blowouts in the college football playoff. I think you're diluting the college football playoff. And I think right now you're already seeing so many blowouts. Alabama blew out Cincinnati last year, and that was just in four teams. So I think 12 teams, really the only upside is for those who are being able to capitalize from it based off of TV dollars and more more money in the pockets who of the people who already have plenty of money. I don't like 12 teams. Um, I think four does it. I think eight would have sufficed. 12 is too much, but I would not be surprised if you see 16 in the very near future. And then, hey, why don't we just do a full bracket? Let's do March Madness in January. Let's get 64 teams in there. I said 32 earlier. I mean, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm with words. you. you know, <laughs> might as well. Yeah, I mean, at this point, because you, I mean, you know what? It stop? It's, in, it's, it's inevitable. I mean, because they're going to make so much it money. Is. They're going to make so much money. Um, Absolutely. But why would they turn slaughtered. that away? I know. I know. Um, it's great to see you. Before I get you out of here, what was the sense you got in College yeah. Station last week uh, around Jimbo? Well, obviously, people are a lot more pleased with Jimbo yeah. after this past week than they were throughout the entire season. I think that this was the vibe that I got. They were so excited to end the season that way. The LSU game was their bowl game, and they won it. So, you know, congratulations to the Aggies. They still want Jimbo Fisher to find a new play call. Yeah. Still want Jimbo Fisher to give up play calling duties. And I've said this all season long, Jimbo, it's not 2014 anymore. Jameis Winston is not your quarterback anymore. What the best coaches in college football have been able to do, and Nick Saban has been the expert at it, is you adapt and you change, even when you don't want to. Nick Saban has adapted and changed his offense even when he didn't want to, and then he's found so much success. Jimbo Fisher has not evolved his offensive style, and he needs another offensive mind to kind of bring this team back to 2022. And I think that's kind of the the same sentiment that a lot of Texas A&M fans feel is even though they, they, they beat LSU and that was their national championship next year, things need to change because it's not about a lack of talent at in this conversation. It's about a um, coaching malpractice rather oh, at Texas A&M. That's, that's a good, that's a good way to term it. <laughs> um, you had to be pretty obnoxious this week on the radio with Joe Burrow coming into Nashville and embarrassing the Titans, huh? You know, I try to temper my LSU homerism Why? when it comes to uh, to <laughs> LSU to LSU players, at least in the league. But you know, when there were so many LSU, um, Titans fans saying, you know, we can we can get to Joe Burrow this pass rush, which you know, granted, the Titans pass rush has been fantastic, elite all season long. I'm like, y'all just don't know Joe Burrow. Y'all just don't know the kind of the toughness and the, the the mental strength that this quarterback has that really kind of trickles down to the entire team. And Mike Vrabel, the coach of the Titans, the identity that he has that he kind of builds in the entire Titans team is we're going to out-tough you. You might be better than us. You know, you might have better skill players than us, but we are going to find you down and we are going to out-tough you. Well, that's Joe Burrow identity that's the joe burrow identity that has kind of trickled down throughout this entire Bengals team and i'm like y'all didn't see this coming i know it i've seen it and and i think that after the divisional round of the playoffs last year when the titans got knocked out by the this year getting beaten by the Bengals and joe burrow they learned that it's just to out tough joe burrow caroline it's great to see you again keep up the great work we'll do it uh, we'll do this again it soon is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great to see you. All right, see you. There is uh, Caroline Fenton checking in from Nashville this morning. You can check her out on Twitter at Caroline Fenton One, uh, where she is the co-host of Stillman and Company, featuring uh, Caroline Fenton, former uh, LSU uh, or an, an LSU graduate. Uh, brought to you by City Cafe. Remember, City Cafe Br dot online, where good friends go to eat, where good friends meet. Over at City Cafe, over a hundred years in business. They're located on O'Neill and George O'Neill where they've been for a while. Go see Squeaky Miranda, Cody Miranda, Dirk and the crew over there. Always fresh oysters that you can find. Always great lunch specials. Of course, brunch on Sundays. City Cafe, citycafebr.net. And uh, watch party. Watch Saturday. party. Yeah. Watch party. Saturday. Absolutely. Cassidy said yeah. he was going to roll by. He's going to bring uh, his brother-in-law. I see what I tell you. He can't stay what the whole you. time. He's just yeah. going to come for a little bit. Sure. 
Uh-huh. I'll just have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sweet. Yes. Um, so you you yeah. So uh, we are confirmed. Kyle Kasky will be here for our watch party. Sweet. Thank Only you, Coach. For a little, maybe sure. a quarter. He said. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Light. Uh, fire that keg up. That's exactly yeah. right. Get the keg <laughs> that's right. Going. Get it going. I um, love people say they're going to stay at a party for just a little bit. Yeah, and that's right. It's two yes, a.m. now, Coach. Except for Jordy, yeah. he really does. Yeah. No. He's he's impossible to cut He's like, yeah, I'll come, and then he roll. He rolls in. Unless you got another one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> um, Try to hold Mercury. <laughs> all right, we had a huge announcement yesterday. Will Wade is joining the team over here at FM Digital. We will have the Will Wade podcast that is going to launch on Monday. Uh, we will talk to the general next here on the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet.